Hello and welcome everyone. Do I have a story for you? For the past two weeks, I've been testing out the Jamitsu quarter inch shank and diameter uh, double flute end mill and a Amana 51404K uh, uh, spiral O flute bit. Uh, it's also a quarter inch shank and diameter. And I was testing these out on my stock 3018 Prover. Stock is the key word here. Spoiler alert, uh, the quarter inch bits beat the ever day living daylights out of my machine. But more on that and how that was really my fault um, a little later. Um, almost everything that could go wrong did. Um, from anti-backlash nuts uh, popping out to extreme chatter and vibrations. Uh, a linear bearing came out one time. Uh, there were sparks in the spindle because it wasn't going too fast. And, oh, uh, it, it was fun, to say the least. But that got me thinking. Is it time I upgrade my 3018 Prover? Um, we'll touch on that towards the end of this video. But first, let's start at the beginning and kind of start with my first test, kind of like I did my other test. But before we get into that, I want to th say thank you to all the, my supporters out there, from those of you who have bought stuff, those of you who watch my video, to my wife and kids who put up with me doing all this. Um, so if you would like to support and haven't already, hit that subscribe button and let's uh, get into this video. So first and foremost, let me say this. These bits are great when used on a more powerful router or spindle, spindle, a more rigid machine than the already rigid 3018, and maybe something even with stronger stepper motors. Um, putting these larger bits on a spindle does not exactly entail a fun time. So my first tests, well, they were okay. Um, only had one issue during all that, but for the most part, they they came out pretty much more or less than I expected. I ran each bit at 225 millimeters per minute and at 290 millimeters per minute. Also, uh, going forward, if I forget to say, you know, per minute, just that is implied all my feed rates are per minute. Uh, whether it's going to, I say, millimeters or inches. At each speed, I ran them either at 0 0.0 or, yes, 0 0.1 millimeter or 0.2 millimeter uh, per pass, depth per cut. And I had the spindle RPM set to 9,000. The Jamatsu uh, double flute bit left uh, blade marks no matter what speed or depth I cut at. With a uh, feed rate of 225 and a depth of uh, 0.1 millimeters per pass, the Amana flute did leave a nice clean edge, but uh, there were some issues with it. As you can see, uh, it did not cut a hole on all the pieces well, and it literally did not cut out one hole on the 0.2 millimeters per depth one. Uh, so for holes, don't use this spiral bit. Um, well, the first issue I ran into was on the cut at uh, 225 millimeters and uh, 0 0.1 millimeters depth. Uh, the top linear bearing popped out. Uh, I was getting some chatter in that cut, but nothing out of the ordinary. And in the rest of my testing, it never came out again. But the same cannot be said of the anti-backlash nut. Several times in my second run of testing at varying speed, at various feeds and depth, it kept disengaging when I was at 0 0.2 millimeters depth or running faster than 300 millimeters feed rate or less than uh, 5,000 RPM. It never disengaged while cutting at a uh, 0 0.1 millimeter depth. I did stop it in time before it did disengage a couple of times when I was trying a ridiculously low RPM setting, but we will get into the chip load testing part in a minute. So after my first round of testing where everything cut except the last hole uh, with the O-flute, 
my overall impression was not satisfied as it had been with other bits I had tried out before. Uh, I could hear that my machine was kind of struggling or at the least pushing harder than I would like or have normally experienced. Now, I wanted to see what could I change in my settings to cut down on the chatter slash vibrations. Not that they were as horrible to what was to come, but more in tone with what I got on my other uh, one eighth bits. So I turned to the math and the methods other told me to look into and what I should be basing my settings on. Chip loads. Okay, so what is chip load? Well, it's the thickness of material cut away by each tooth. Um, easy enough. Jump on Google and compare several sites to find the chip load for a three quarter inch bit on four acrylics. Um, there was very little difference between all my searches and they all pretty much fell into the range of 0 0.008 inch to 0 0.01 inch uh, for quarter inch bits. So naturally I aim to get close to 0 0.009 inches. So I opened up my handy Excel and started doing the math. Now all these sites with chip loads do say these are just a starting point. So let's keep that in mind as we go forward. Uh, one of the first formulas you're going to see is how to determine feed rate. And that is by the RPM times the number of flutes times the chip load you are looking for. For a quarter inch one flute bit, the optimal feed rate, or what is the fastest I can run my 3018 at, is 299 millimeters or 11.8 inches per, mi per minute. The maximum feed rate is based off of per previous tests done for other videos and tested some of that on for this one. So to maintain a 0 0.009 inch or 0 0.2286 millimeter chip load, which would make my RPMs be 1,300. Now that RPM seems really low. And from testing it, it is. What does work every time at that speed is the anti-backlash nut disengages. The lowest RPM I could cut at on my 3018 for acrylic was 5,000 RPM for the spindle. Anything under that, I ran into major issues. The 5,000 RPM worked, but I still feel I need to run it at an even longer timing to confirm all that. But still just stick with 5,000 RPM being the lowest we want to run the spindle at. In regard to feed rate, anything over 300 millimeters per minute for feed, I had issues as well. Please note, we're not even talking about depth right now. So what should my feed be if the spindle is running at the minimum RPM? Well, 1,143 millimeters per minute or 45 inches per minute. That's 853 more millimeters per minute more than the max feed I have ever successfully cut um, acrylic at. Okay, that's a single flute. What about the double flute? Well, the best feed rate I could do there was 299 millimeters or 11.79 inches. And the RPM should be 655. That's even lower than the single flute RPM. What about the minimum RPM of 5,000? Well, that would require a 2,286 millimeter or 90 inches per minute feed. Now we are way over the max rate feed rate I can handle on my 3018. So what did I get to work with little chatter, not a massive amount of vibrations and parts not going AWOL? Well, my feed rate was 270 millimeters or 10.62 inches per minute with an RPM of 9,000. And that was with the quarter inch bit one flute and two flute. Those settings gave me a 
0.0011 inch or 0.03 millimeter chip load with one flute and 0 0.0005905 inches or 0 0.015 millimeter chip load with a double flute. So my best settings are not ejecting enough material according to the math. The single or O flute bit was just under double the double flute bit's chip load. So a single flute is going to have a better chance of succeeding than the double flute. Okay, let's give the math and the numbers a break here and talk on a more person-to-person -person level. Now, in my previous bit vi testing videos, um, which I used several uh, 1 8 inch uh, bits, I did have people bring up, uh, I was not using chip load as for testing and determining my speeds and feeds. Also, some pointed out that it's not cutting if you're just taking 0 0.1 millimeter to 0 0.2 millimeters off per pass. Well, yes, if I was using my long mill at these numbers, I would not be cutting acrylic. I would be whittling it down. As my stock 3018 has a plastic Z casing, uh, it has decent stepper motors, and its frame is sturdy for its size and how much I paid for it. It just cannot handle the recommended settings by figuring out the chip load. So even being able to cut it at the settings I do it on may not fall into a mechanics uh, definition. I am a hobbyist, artist, a maker, and the end result, even if it takes longer, or the edges need to be cleaned up some, um, it meets the definition of cutting for me. Uh, without it, none of these projects would ever have been made. Yes, someone else could pop this out on their 3040 long mill, upgraded 3018, or laser way faster. But not everyone has the resources or lives in a region where material is readily available to upgrade or want to drop that much cash on something they are still learning. So let people learn to work with what they have. Let them explore and try new things. I mean, some of the greatest things to be discovered or invented came from people doing crazy things. All right. Now I want to address the next step in the math that I'm not going to go over. And that is the cutting speed and or surface speed. And to make an analogy, my first couple of videos on cutting acrylic are like a kid learning addition of subtraction. With this video and test, I have moved on to multiplication and division. Moving into cutting speed and surface speed is moving into advanced calculus. A subject, even the school I went to, said, yeah, no, we want to maintain uh, a blue ribbon school status, so we're going to put you in math models. Basically, it was a class on how to balance your checkbook. And yes, that was 15 to 20 some odd years ago. And I actually care these days. Also, I can go at my own pace and no pressure to pass all my classes so I can play football. So... I feel I have a very decent understanding of the subtraction addition, does it work, and my understanding of the multiplication division, chip load, RPM, feed, is way above where it used to be. And next, I need to get a better understanding of the advanced ca calculus, surface speed, cutting speed. And I need to do that before I even attempt to claim I know what I'm talking about or go over it all with you on that subject. So. That's the next step, putting, adding that into and seeing if we can come up with even better uh, ways and better um, speeds and speeds to cut this at, maybe using these. So, is that the end? No, there is more. But that is my next step. Yes, I'm still new to all this, relatively speaking, that is. No, I have no... In no prior experience in any of this, no jobs that I use this uh, in. All what I did uh, for this video is a lot of Googling and putting together what I felt I was understanding. I know there are people out there who have 
a more comprehensive understanding of this subject matter, and maybe they will find some faults with my methods, or have some, some, some suggestions for tweaking things. Uh, I am open to it, encourage it. I also hope I shed some light on helped others who have not gotten into this math, or at least nudged them uh, to do their own research on this. I'm going to put all my charts on my portfolio page where you can find a um, link for them down below. Uh, if you would like the Excel file itself, um, let me know. We can uh, email that out as well. Uh, I do have the numbers for both my 3018 and long mill on there for both quarter inch and eighth inch bits. All right, let's take a closer look at the bits themselves. The Jimit Jimitsu or the two flute bits um, or the part number is SR05A come in a five pack for $45.99 or that works out to $9.19 a bit. Uh, none of my pricing includes shipping, taxes, any of that fun stuff. Not bad, but that's a sizable, sizable investment. They say they can be used for wood, MDF, PVC, or acrylic. They are made from tungsten steel with a nano blue coating. The shank and cutting diameter are one quarter of an inch or 6.35 millimeters. They are 55 millimeters in length with a 25 millimeter cutting length. When I measured the cutting diameter of mine, I got 6.33 millimeters. So it is close to its advertised size. You will need the correct size ER cullet for both quarter inch bits. I am using, let's see if I can read here, ER11 cullet, uh, size one fourth. There we go. This is a straight edge bit and has a pretty flat top. So that's why it leads me to believe it cut out holes and left a nice pocket finish when I used it. Um, the next bit is the Amana 51404K Spectra Coded SC Spiral O-Bit. This bit as well has a 1 4th inch shank and cutting diameter. Though when measured, the large, largest measured diameter I got was 5.76 millimeters for the cutting area. It does have a cutting height of 3 quarters and is about 2 inches in length. It is coated with na Naco, which is a micro thin ceramic coating, which helps it to retain sharpness and luber luber lubricity. That's a new one for me, um, but I know what they mean. Also, the coating is used to help dissipate heat, hmm, like a heat pipe in computers. Interesting. This bit did leave a great edge when it was cutting out the shapes, but it had a lot of issues when cutting out the holes and that I chalk up to the spiral design knocking back, knocking more back down into the hole rather than out like the straight edge double bit. Now this bit is one for forty ninety one. Again, that does not include shipping, handling or taxes or any of that fun stuff. So. That is four times more expensive per bit than the double uh, flute. But you get this nice clean edge. So you're going to have to make a call and decide what is going to work with you and your budget and what type of results you want. I would like to point out that I did cut out one of my Dallas LED signs with the double flute bit and the edge was fine. And that was done on my long mill. Um, it was nothing like the edge of the 3018 cuts, where it was very choppy. All right. So, what have we learned today? Well, we learned that a stock 3018 will not cut at optimum chip load requirements. But I also learned that if you want to use a quarter inch bit, uh, I should probably use my long mill if time is an issue. If I had to say where the bits fall on using them on a stock 3018, I would say in the gray zone. Uh, you can use them, but as you should be doing, keep an eye on them while they're cutting. 
seriously. And if I were going to recommend any speeds and feeds for a stock 3018, I would suggest a starting range of 225 millimeter to 290 millimeters per minute for your feed, a depth of 0.1 millimeters per pass, and you can try 0.2 millimeters per pass, but be careful. Also, you should be keeping an eye on your machine, even if it has never failed before. But when using these quarter inch bits, keep an eye on them. All right, as for RPM, well, I would say start around 9,000 and you can slowly work your way down if you want, just listen to your machine. Your machine's gonna tell you how it's doing, okay? Also, the sparks coming out of the top of the motor because your RPM's too slow, that's bad. I would probably also recommend that you use the O flute or the single flute when it's a quarter inch uh, diameter. If you really wanna speed up your cuts and use quarter bits with fewer problems, well, you may want to look at upgrading to an aluminum Z ax uh, Z holder carriage or spindle mount, uh, getting a more powerful spindle router, or upgrading it to a 3040. But if you are happy with you using uh, eighth inch bit and some longer cut times, or you want to try all this out before you drop thousands of dollars on a machine, upgrades and materials that you will not be using in a year because it was just not for you, that's okay too. This is a great learning machine. Even if chip loads are not perfect, maybe you're wanting to focus more on the design aspect of the things you're making or just using it here and there to make stuff um, to sell to friends and family or presents. Yes, you can make some money with these. Just let's be realistic with yourself on what are you working with? For us hobbyists, crafters, makers, the 3018 is a great starting point to dip your toes in. But if you want to say open an Etsy shop and start selling acrylic designs all the while max maximizing speed and reliability, well then you may want to look into a more powerful CNC or laser. CO2 by the way. Um, with that being said, Thank you for sticking around through all this and remember to hit that subscribe button and maybe go check out some of my other videos. I am just waiting to get some of the last parts I need before I start making my second video for the Lego Infinity Mirror. So that one should be coming out soon. Hit the alert button to get notified as soon as it uploads. In the meantime, if you haven't had enough of me, Check out the first part of the Lego Infinity Mirror series, or maybe you want to go back and check out one of my older videos like cutting cast acrylic or testing out six bits. Um, either way, thank you again for watching, and until next time, keep making stuff.